Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Homeland TV. This is the second part of Dorico Pro's write mode and specifically the magical insert mode. If you are a beginner, make sure to watch the first part before this episode. Link will be in the description below. So what is insert mode? Let me show you with an example. I will turn on note input mode and add a note here. So double click and just add a bunch of notes. Nothing special, right? It's just a regular way of adding notes. Now let me turn on note input mode and add some notes the same way as I did. I'm just going to delete this and I will go here to the left column and click on this button. So when I turned on note input mode, note uh, insert mode, and now I'm going to insert, let's say, a, a whole note or a whole dotted note. So Notice how after I added this note, the rest of the notes from the point of insertion jumped to the right. That is because when you turn on insert mode, Dorico will not change the note or the rest that was already occupying that space but it will add it as a complete new note while also adding the duration of that note in that moment of time. Pretty neat. And of course, this also works for removing notes. So normally, if I select a note and press delete on my keyboard without insert mode being on, it will only turn that pitch into a rest note. So for example, this one, I will turn off note insert. If I delete it, it will just uh, turn it into rest and it did just combined the uh, duration of the rest to make an empty bar here. But now if I undo the process by pressing Control Z, turn on insert mode and then delete it, you will notice that the note is completely removed and the rest of the score is pulled back to that moment in our score's timeline. Super neat. These were the basics of insert mode and Dorico's insert mode has three other options that can be selected and used depending on the situation that you want to modify your scores. First, let's see where they are and then we can check them out. So I'll head to the left column, move my cursor onto the insert mode button and then I will left click and hold the mouse button for a moment until I see a new tiny window popping open. You can also just right click on this button and it will work the same. So if I just let it go and I just right click, you see it just opens super fast and easy. So both methods work. And also if you wondered how I knew there were more options for this button, it is because this tiny triangle is here that is indicating it. The first one is the one that I already told you. And the second one is for a situation where you want the note insertion process to affect all the staff and voices that belong to a player. So for example, if we have a piano score and I use the insert mode's default settings, it will only affect the notes on the voice that note input is focused on. For example, uh, this note, I'm just going to delete it with the default setting. If I delete it, you'll notice that it's affected the upper voice, the first voice, and it just pulled back the rest of the notes in the score to that moment in time. However, if I go with the second option in the insert mode, it will also affect the other staffs and voicings. Let's try it out. So I'm going to just undo it, I'll go here, I'll do right click, click on this, this one, player, and highlight this note, and then click on backspace on my keyboard or delete, and you can see everything moved back and even it changed the layout of my score because now it's kind of uh, matching it to the information that is here right now. And uh, before we go to the next section of this video, I wanted to kindly ask that if you are new here, please do consider subscribing 
and pressing that like button as it helps and motivates me to make more content like this. And if you had time also, check out my other videos, you might like them. Now let's try the third option. I will hover over insert mode button and right click. Notice that there is a globe icon and also it's written global here inside this uh, button and uh, it means that this third option will give you the ability to use note insert mode uh, for the entire players and instruments that are available in your score. So if we just sum it up uh, till now, it will be the first one was just voicing, which is this. The second one, uh, which is the player here, is uh, for um, everything that's happening uh, within a player, so all the stabs, all the voicings, and this one is for literally everything in your score. Now I will turn it on and modify a note. Let's see, whoop, yeah. So if I now change this, take a look at this so you keep it in mind, like if this E is right here, and this these are aligned here, like this, uh, sorry, <laughs> this G, and this, uh, we have a B here. Now if I delete this, everything moved back. So everything in my score from this point, they are, uh, the durations are being reduced by an eighth note and they are just moving back. And finally, the last option, which is honestly the coolest one for composers, is that Dorica will automatically change the time signature of the bar that you are adding or removing notes based on the inserted notes duration. Let's try it out. So I'm going to just right click and global adjustment of current bar. This is it. Just going to click on it. Oop, click. Yes. So let's click on, let's just select this one and notice the, the time signature is actually 12, eight. So imagine we have two six eights here. And if I just delete here, it just turns it automatically into a three, four. So it automatically calculates everything and changes the time signature, which is super handy for uh, changing things on the fly. And that's it guys. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please